Hello and welcome back to Basel World for the last of our panel discussions this week. Today we're going to be talking about the art of collecting, um, how to start a collection, um, the different types of collecting you can do. Um, and joining me I have two uh, experts. Um, on my left, Thierry Gasquez, you're a watch collector and founder of an online uh, watch magazine and community called Passion Horlogère. So welcome, it's Thank lovely you. to have you. Welcome, Sophie. Hi, I'm also delighted uh, to introduce Rémi Guillemin, uh, Head of Watches for Christie's Geneva. You've travelled the world with Christie's, you were previously stationed in New York, Dubai and Hong Kong, I believe, exactly. as well. Uh, so welcome, I'm really happy to, to have you both here Thank today. You. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, let's dive straight in. Um, there are different types of collectors, you know, it's not just one typical watch collector. Remy, can you tell us about the different types of collectors that you see? Sure, so as you just mentioned, you know, uh, the world of collecting, there's a lot of variety and there's a lot of, you know, variety in people as well. Uh, the beautiful thing about the auction industry and about uh, Christie's, for example, is that we're a highly international auction house and we have a huge network um, of offices, uh, for example. So. You know, we have a team in Hong Kong, we have a team in Dubai, we have a team in New York and in Europe as well, in Geneva. So that really enables us to see a very different people with different culture, different backgrounds, you know, and therefore people looking for different things. Uh, when it comes to collecting, you have people who will look, you know, for vintage timepieces, uh, watches that were created in the past, you know, that are uh, the icon of a watch manufacturer, for example. Um, or you will have people looking for modern timepieces and you know the more exclusive watches with uh, you know the most advanced movements, for example. So there's a lot of direct of collectors. You know we can uh, uh, speak about it in, in depth. You know and uh, a lot of different ways of collecting as well. Okay, that's interesting. Terry, what kind of a collector are you? I'm. A, it, you know, for me to be a collector is a chance, a real yeah. chance. Yes, um, I, when I was young, I never thought I would never be interested about watches because when I was young, uh, the most interesting watches was, were quartz. When I met people, I asked, you have a very beautiful watch, is it a quartz? When they said me, yes, I said, wow, because it was technology. But later, uh, I fell in love with one watch, one contemporary watch, it was a Rolex. Rolex one at this moment it was easy to find <laughs> Every, everywhere so I wanted it but as many people for me they thought it was very expensive for only a watch because I didn't know what was a watch at this moment and I for my anniversary all my family and all my friends uh, wanted to, me to be very happy and they offered me this watch that was the beginning but that wasn't the beginning of my collect collecting time because I thought at this moment that would be my only watch for all, all my life because I loved it. I wear it every day during three years and one time because I began to be passionate, very interested in watch enthusiasts, I met all the watch enthusiasts and one man who was someone very, uh, very particular. He was um, a diver, a diver for the comics, and he has a, a special history. His name is Teoma Rostomos. Teoma Rostomos is the man deepest in the world, 700 meters under the sea with the comics. And during all the lunch, I wear his watch. It was uh, another Rolex, a Cedrilla. And after the lunch, I said, okay. I want this watch because there is a mystery because there is a man who is a myth in the the, the, the diving history and I, w I wanted the same that was my second second watch and that was the beginning of my collection because now at, at this moment I wanted other other and other watches oh, yeah wow. oh it's a great story Remy how did you get interested in watches um, I think it's something, you know, that I uh, shared with my father at the very beginning, you know. Um, he used to be very interested into watches and cars, so that's something that we shared together. And then uh, it's kind of the same thing, you know, you, you fall in love with a specific model and then you start reading and researching about it, you know, and you discover that when, you know, you learn about a watch, there's so many details and so much information in our industry that 
you know, it's, it almost becomes a different language for so many people, you know, and then you meet other, you know, watch collectors or people do, who have an interest in watch collecting as well, and there is this sense of community, you know, and you really share something strong, uh, a passion for, you know, aesthetics, for complications, for uh, so many different things. So I think the, the, the star was, you know, uh, was my father, and uh, from then, you know, it kind of evolved throughout the years. Um, I wanted to ask you, both of you actually, um, watch collecting or wristwatch collecting is, is a relatively new thing and it seems to be growing and growing. Do you have any insights to why that is? Maybe we'll start with you, Terry. There are many reasons for that. Many reasons. First of all, that's because now it's easy to share with all collectors, with many people because of the social media, because of the watch brands. Uh, communicate better and better. The watch brands uh, are not only uh, selling watches, they are selling history, they are selling many things. So that began to interest more and more people. That was for the, the, the new watches, the, 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 watches, the con contemporary watches. But because of this history, everybody uh, have the opportunity to look and to be interested by the, um, the past of these uh, this, um, uh, watch brands and there are so many adventures in this, uh, in this history and these adventures are always human adventures because watch are tools, wire tools in the history and there is always a, a link, a relationship between the men, the people who wear this, these watches and the product. So, for me, that's the beginning, and it is easy, easy to, to collect watches because it's a little product, and you don't need to have a big house or a big garage, for example, the same for the, the cars. Uh, you need only to 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 have a patient and to have um, how to say a, a link uh, for your uh, between your 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 taste and the product, and you need course uh, money for that but they are for everybody some watches are very expensive other are very cheap and they are good products too so the the watches are for everybody do you, do you have anything to add about the growing collecting community no i think i, I totally agree you know those were really good points uh, we're in the market that speaks to so many different people you know and uh, that's just the beauty of, uh, of watches and of watch collecting as well uh, and then, of course, you know, there's the increased uh, sharing of information, uh, which is really key, you know, for vintage watches as well as for modern watches as well. Um, you know, it goes back to the previous point that we just spoke about. When you start, you know, learning about watches, uh, the more information you have, the better it is for the market. And then, of course, social media and the media in general, you know, um, assisting everyone, you know, to kind of communicate and share, you know, that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah, I love this sense of community. I have friends who, who started collecting maybe 15 years ago, who felt really alone, like it was almost an illness, this passion in watches, and then they discovered there were other people out there, thanks to the forums and everything, yes. and, uh, and then it just sort of exploded and they could share their passion and it's such a beautiful thing but you know 15 years ago it maybe wasn't quite like that um, you have uh, your website you also have a whole community of, of watch aficionados yes. uh, you know in your community um, how did this all start so, so uh, this um, this community start only with patient and you know first as you said um, the the collectors were alone so with the social media, with the forums, they began to share. And after that, you know, you are virtual. That's the best way to, um, to find people who have the same, how to say, problem. Because it is a problem to, uh, to be watch enthusiast. And you have someone to talk about. Because it's not easy when you are a collector to talk with your family, your friends, who cannot understand that you are a watch fan. They cannot. You find people who have the same, uh, the same passion of you, and after the second step, you met them. You are meeting them. And what I, uh, I've done is to organize dinner, is to organize some meetings with brands, 
and to um, to enjoy in this uh, in this station. And this is the best engine after to continue and to uh, to to to, uh, to um, how to say to to share his passion and to collect to collect to collect. We have advice with people and uh, we can uh, we can. Um, talk about um, history, about the watches, about our own history with the watch. So for me, uh, yes, the first step was social media and forum, and the second one was the reality to meet people. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, Remy, at Christie's, I imagine it must be a little bit different because you have your, your clients and you have very special relationships with individual clients. Do you also work on building a community? Does everyone get together at the auctions? Do they all know each other? Exactly. So, you know, as you say, um, you know, we have, we're very fortunate uh, to have clients that are extremely passionate about wristwatches and about all kinds of wristwatches. And, you know, also it's a very international community. So, you know, wherever you go, and uh, that's the beauty of our auctions, in our offices, wherever it's in Hong Kong or Dubai or Geneva or New York, we host watches auctions and we see collectors gathering, collectors exchanging, you know, and that's really um, something really magical. And, uh, you know, uh, right now traveling is a bit, you know, complicated, so it, it, it's more difficult for, you know, clients to travel from a continent to another, for example, but it's yet, you know, you still see them exchange, you know, and uh, share about watches and e even more today than before. It's just the, the ways of sharing that evolve, but um, the, the community is there. And uh, actually a, an interesting thing is, um, you know, during COVID, we, we weren't hosting any live auctions. Uh, we only restarted recently and, um, you know, collectors are coming. Collectors are coming, they're traveling. In May, we had beautiful watch auctions. We had American customers, clients coming, collectors, people from Italy, people from so many different regions. So it just shows really that uh, there, there is the need to share and you know to regroup when it comes to, to watch collecting. Yes. You've been holding um, online auctions as well during the pandemic as well to reach people as well. How successful have they been? So actually, you know, the the our idea to, to do only you know, to do um, online auctions uh, during COVID came from our clients, you know, um, and uh, of course, you know, uh, it's something that we were very happy to do. But uh, I remember, you know, during the first weeks uh, of the pandemic, you know, we had to postpone our physical auctions from May to July, and you know, we were thinking, okay, we have, you know, wh what do we do now, you know? And we had clients coming to us and say, ah. You know, you should do online auctions. Uh, we we really want to see, you know, uh, the watches that you were able to find. You know, uh, that's the great thing about auctions is that we're able to find watches that have disappeared from the market. You know, and to make them, you know, rediscovered to a new group of collector, for example. So, um, yeah, we were hosting, you know, uh, auctions online in uh, in Hong Kong, in New York, and, and in Geneva, and uh, we had great, you know. Uh, responses from our clients. Oh, do you think it will stay? Something that will stay afterwards? Yeah, I think, you know, now people are used to see online auctions and to transact online. So it's definitely going to stay. I think it's just finding the right balance between live auctions where people have the opportunity to meet, you know, physically. Again, as we said, you know, collecting is a lot about, you know, community and sharing. Um, and then, you know, uh, find the complement with the online sales as well. Um, I wanted to ask you also um, about starting a collection. So if someone's watching and they're like, I'd really like to start my own collection, uh, where do you begin? Uh, Remy, where, where would you suggest someone begins? I think it's, first of all, it's highly personal, you know. Uh, there is no exact rule about, you know, how to start a collection or you should buy this watch to start your collection. It's really um, personal. You have to have I believe a connection with the watch, you know, an emotional collection. You need to appreciate, you know, your first watch or, you know, the watches that you get for your collection. Um, that's really the key. Then, you know, if I could give an advice to people who, who are collecting is to focus on condition of the watches they purchase, um, rarity as well, and then provenance. You know, those, this for me is really the, the things, you know, the, 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 the first steps. Uh, and to study as well, 
and not to rush. Okay, take the time. Then. Exactly. How about you, Remy? Do you have any hot tips? Me, um, I want first to say uh, the, f the first thing about, uh, you have to think about is your pleasure. First one. Not, you don't have to follow any trends, you don't have to follow uh, some people. Uh, you have to, 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 to feel something special, an emotion. Yeah. So choose first, your first watch is the one that you, uh, are beautiful for you first. And after, you can build your own history. And you can be sensitive with old, vintage, uh, one brand, other brand, uh, the, a kind of watches, diving watches, or with complication watches. No, no problem, no matter. Do what you want only, the first. And after, if you want to build something special, if you want, if, we, if you think about um, uh, let something to your, for your children, if you want to, if you have a patrimony uh, way to, to build it, you have time to, to do it. Because there are some mistakes you can do at the beginning, uh, and you have for that to have information, you have to follow, to go to the auction, uh, houses who are very serious, where there are some people, uh, you can be confident with them. But that's the, f the second step for me. But the first, pleasure. Second, okay, build it. Build a real collection that uh, sh uh, can show the, 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 the people you are. Yeah. What stage do you think you become a collector? Is there That's like a, a, a gauge, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to have spent this much money or have this many pieces or... You know, the example yeah, I gave to you, uh, first of all, it was mine and uh, I began with the second one because I want, I, I, I know that I wanted, I will want another one. Okay. So it depends on, um, it depends on each people. Some people have some 20 or 30 watches and they, they say they are not collectors. They say they are not collectors because they only uh, have watches for pleasure and because it's a question of fashion, it's a question of things like that. It's not a question of, um, uh, how to say, um, I used to say um, a, a watch, um, uh, how? <laughs> horlogère, montre horlogère. So, so for me, a watch which is a watch from uh, watchmakers, that's the beginning of the interest of the real watches and to this moment you can you can um, you can be a collector's you know it's it's not a question of number of, uh, of watches it's a question of mentality so I used to say when I'm buying a watch I'm very happy but I'm thinking about the next one so okay. that's the reason why I'm, I'm a collector okay it's, uh, it's interesting <laughs> Is there a question that somebody should ask themselves before they launch into a purchase? What question would should someone ask themselves? Uh, do you understand? No. Maybe. Do I think um, you know. Uh, it's it's again you know every person will have its own approach uh, when acquiring a watch, and uh, you know it's first you know it's do I really like the watch? You know, is there really something that you know? attracts me with the watch and am I buying it for the right reasons you know and then the person will know and um, that's I think you know answers your question. <laughs> yeah definitely. People will often ask me you know do you think I should buy it and I say well do you love it? Yes. If you love it, it are you gonna love it and wear it then hmm. go ahead you know don't think yeah. about investments or, or anything else if you love no, something it. And enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah that's every day that's a this kind of situation yeah. I can meet, yes. Uh, should I buy it? Do you like it? Go. Yeah. Will Go. It make you of happy? course, of Go course. What do you want to do with that? You want to wear it? You want to put it on a, uh, on a museum? Or you want to put it uh, on the bank because you want the, the, the value to grow? That's, yeah. It depends on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Everyone has different Yes, do what you want. Okay. That's always what I used to say. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk just uh, briefly about restoration because this is a big uh, question in the watch world. Um, how far should people go with restoration? Um, is it a good thing? Should you avoid it? Remy, what, what are your advice uh, from Christie's? You know, um, we sell around 2,000 watches per year at Christie's uh, throughout the world. Uh, auctions, online, live auctions, online auctions and private sales. 
you know, for every watch we carefully inspect them, you know, in detail. Um, we dismantle them, you know, and we analyze the dials, the case, the bracelets, the buckles, really in, in, in great depth. I think it's on a case by case basis, you know. You have watches uh, which everyone, you know, uh, love and people, you know, are avidly hunting for these watches or the watches that we consider, you know, uh, kept in excellent environment and preserved extremely well. You know, those watches for me, uh, all the watches that, you know, people uh, are, you know, looking for the most and that often at auction command the highest prices because they're so rare and the fact that their condition is excellent. You know. On the other hand, you know, if you have a watch that has been, you know, um, kept in a less than stellar environment, you know, that has been exposed to water, to humidity, or that has been damaged, you know, during its wear and to, to a shock, let's say, um, you know, what, what can you do? You know, you have to have the watch restored and uh, I think that, you know, it's, it's perfectly acceptable, you know, to have a watch restored if it's done properly. Um, and depending also on the wristwatch, on the life that the watch had, it's not necessarily, you know, something that you should aim for. Uh, if your watch is perfect, then leave it as is. But if you require for a watch to be restored, then it's totally acceptable. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on this subject? Yes. Uh, so, I, I'm a little bit different because, of course, we are, uh, you are professional in auction, and me, I'm only a watch enthusiast. And what I used to say is the restoration you can do, it depends on what you want to do with your watch. If you want to keep it in the original, as a, an original one, so a, world, a watch um, can be old and the time can make his, um, uh, his effect. No problem. Let her uh, like, like that. But you have to know that you cannot wear it like a contemporary one. You cannot do what all uh, your, your daily life uh, can propose to you. I will take an example for, with an old Rolex, an old Rolex for diving a submariner, for example. If it's uh, 50 years old, if you want to continue to, to dive or if you want to continue to, to swim and to wear it every day, you need to have a restoration, a good restoration. Yes, you need it because uh, it's dangerous. If not. But everything can be saved because it's mechanical. No problem, no problem for that. But if it's someone, if you want to buy a part of history and to keep it, to, uh, to watch it and to have like a testimony of the past, no, don't do any restoration. Keep it, let her uh, become an old one, you know, as we are. Yeah, as we are. So there is, our watches have a life, so let them, be old and one day probably to, to, to die. Yeah. Why not? Why not? It depends on what you want to do. Yeah, no, it's an interesting uh, perspective too. I hadn't <laughs> thought of it like that. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about trends as well because we're seeing some interesting trends in the, yeah. you know, in this world. Remy, you, what are you seeing at Christie's? What are people interested in right now? So, um, you know, we have very different types of collectors. So, you know, we have people who are looking for, you know, icons. We have people who are looking for sports watches. We have people who are looking for so many different things. Um, I think, you know, um, the more people study and the more information, you know, there is in our industry, um, the better it is because we see many new collectors who are coming and who are starting, you know, from so many different countries to build collections, you know, and uh, through, you know, the knowledge that they gather, you know, they tend, you know, to buy different things. Uh, so that's really the beauty of auction is that there is a diversity uh, of watches in our, in our sales, you know, because we are uh, constantly looking for pieces, we're constantly in contact with our collectors, you know, to see what can be sold, what can be purchased, and we also have, as we discussed earlier, discoveries, you know, uh, watches that were locked in a safe for so long, you know, and they reappear to the market today. Um, so I think people want to be surprised, and people, you know, uh, when they see an auction catalog, they they they, they enjoy to see different things. Um, and you know, it comes with modern watches, vintage watches, and then also you have an independent watchmaking, which you know is really uh, 
gaining more and more importance today and I think you know that as people get educated it's a trend that should become even larger you know yeah. how about you Terry are you seeing anything with your community yes. what they're looking no, for the majority of the community focus on three four brands but what I used to say is look at many other you have in your collection these brands so they are independent watchmakers imagine you go to the past and uh, you can uh, meet someone like Abraham Lubreguet and you can buy a watch to Abraham Lubreguet imagine that's crazy and today you have you have some genius who are alive and can uh, sell you a watch for example Ludovic Balouard, Vianney Alter, uh, Philippe Dufour for me that's something amazing so I used to, to, to say to them, go meet these people, Mr. Kari Butilainen, for example, Grunfeld Brothers, they are very interested, they are here alive and they can sell you something exceptional. There is a, a pleasure, a particular pleasure. So, okay, have a big, a, a great collection with the Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, these kind of brands, they are major, they have a beautiful history. But there are some other brands who are from independent watchmakers and more than watches, you can buy a part of the watchmaker because he's in front of you. That's why I, I, I appreciate to, uh, to advise to, um, to my collectors, yes. No, that's true. It's, uh, and you can meet these people once you yes. get into this world. They're yes. very open and they're delighted to with share their passion emotion. with you. It's a yeah. part of the, of the, 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 the man or the, of the watchmaker you have here. Yeah. Yes, that's incredible. And for your sons, for, for your children, that would be a special history. Yeah. That daddy met this watchmaker, yeah. <laughs> or grandpa met this watchmaker. That's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a, a silly question for, to, to conclude. Yes. Uh, if I had a crystal ball, what do you see in the future of collecting or the, the auction world? Any predictions? So Remy, I'll start with you. In terms of trend. No, yeah, in terms of trends or... I think, um, you know, people are going to continue, you know, really focusing on quality. Uh, you know, that's again linked to education and transparency about, you know, our industry and the fact that more and more um, information is available to the public, so that's for sure. And then in terms of uh, trend, I believe that, you know, uh, kind of goes to the previous subject that we were talking about, independent watchmaking. Um, you know, and as you said, there are so many geniuses, you know, who are creating. Uh, I think that people recognize value in this, you know, and uh, are always looking, you know, for the future pieces from independent watchmakers, their future creations. Um, and that's uh, an industry that, you know, a, a segment of watch collecting that I see growing um, even more in the future. Okay, wonderful. How about you, Terry? Any predictions? Yeah, I, I think and I hope, I really hope that great collectors will begin to show their collection and to have some, um, how to say, exposition? Um, yeah, exhibition. Exhibition and showing their collection, explaining, explaining it, uh, you know, like in art, like Mr. Pino, Mr. Arno, and to have foundation and to, to show their collection. That would be wonderful. Yes. I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> Any collectors I really watching, wish that. Yeah. Um, there's some food for thought. Yes, and please, if there are great collectors who are watching us, please do it. Yes, passion horlogère. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a little you. plug. And Christie's.com. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to chat with you today. I'm a little bit smarter than I was when I woke up this morning. So. <laughs> Thank you so thank much. You, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for listening. This is our last of our panel discussions. Um, but Basel World uh, is back, and we'll be back again in March 31st. Uh, so until then, uh, stay well.